Hey, what is up guys? My name is Tony Teaches Tech and today I'm going to show you how to move a WordPress website from one host to another. We're going to use a plugin called All-in-One Migration. I think that's what it's called. Let's get into it. So here is my website. It is TonyFlorida.com. We're going to go into our WordPress dashboard and in the plugin section and add a new plugin. So let's see what the name of this is. All in one migration. Yes, all in one WordPress migration, WP migration. So go ahead and install that now and activate it. Now, once that is activated, we can see it on the left hand side here. I want to click on the export section and we want to export to a file. So it's going to do its thing. It's going to like take all of your databases, your, your posts, um, everything, pages, pictures, images, put it into a single file that you can then upload to another WordPress installation. So it's a very straightforward process. There's one little gotcha, but I'll teach you how to uh, get around that without having to spend money. Um, but um, yeah, when this is finished, just click download. And once it's downloaded in your downloads folder, you'll have a single file ending in .wpress. Mine is 1.24 gigabytes. So let's go over to our new website host. For me, I've already went through the process of setting up a blank WordPress website. Um, it's just running under this IP address right here, but we can go into the WordPress admin dashboard, go into plugins and do the same type of thing that we just did. So add new, type in all in one, and that should find it very good. There it is, all in one WP migration. We're gonna install that and activate it. So there we go. So we got that activated and let's go to the left hand side this time instead of export, let's do import. And as you can see, we can now pick the file from our file system and that's in our downloads folder and click on that and upload it. Now, while this is going, you can see back here that the maximum upload size for my server is two gigabytes. That probably won't be the same for you. This is something that um, PHP actually dictates how big of a file you can upload to your server. And that is done at the server level. So um, there's this other link here that says how to increase maximum upload file size, or you can get unlimited. So the unlimited thing is a paid thing. It's you have to pay, I forget what it is. It's like a lifetime license though, I think. Um, but we don't want to spend any extra money than we have to. You can actually, all you really have to do is edit a single file on your WordPress website under the hood. So I've actually went through the process of making a video about that. Um, I'll link that up here. It is, uh, it's, it's a, for me, it's a fairly straightforward process uh, because I'm familiar with this type of things with a background in software engineering. But for some of you other guys, it might not be as straightforward. So that's why I went through the process of making a video. So this is, again, only something that you have to do if your, uh, your, your, your archive file that we're uploading now is larger than the maximum upload size for your new WordPress website. Otherwise, you're good to go. You could just keep following the instructions. And when this is finished uploading, I'll catch back up with you guys. All right, so we're only at 43%. I just got back from a 20 minute run, if you couldn't tell. And the internet here in Bali, Indonesia is very slow. So I definitely have enough time to go hop in the shower, change, and still probably be waiting when I get back. But um, I'll, I'll cut back in when this is actually finished uploading. All right, the final countdown, less than one tenth of a percent to go. That took a lot longer than I thought it was gonna take. Um, it's gonna obviously vary for you depending on how big your website is and how fast your internet connection is. But um, yeah, I'm glad that we're finally at 100%. It literally took over an hour and it has since started raining. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but uh, yeah. That's rainy season for you here in Bali. All right, so this is gonna finish doing its thing here. And when it's done, it says the import process will overwrite your website, including the database media, blah, blah, blah. That's okay because this website, if you remember, is just a blank dummy website for WordPress. So let's go ahead and click on proceed here. Put this back so you guys can hear me. And um, it's restoring, so this will take not nearly as long as before because it's not dependent on the internet. 
So what it's doing in the background is basically just uh, setting up a new database and restoring all your posts, pages, images, everything pretty much so that your website is going to be identical as it was on your old host, now on your new host. So it says your site has been imported successfully. So we can go ahead and click on finish. Now, um, what I usually do here is I just knock off all of this nonsense here and just go to the IP address or if you do have a domain set up now, that's okay. And there you go. So we are now hosting Tony Florida WordPress website from this IP address. And the thing is we still have the old website here at um, at our old host, TonyFlorida.com. So old, new. All right, so let's sign in. And there's just a couple more things that we wanna to do to finalize the setup. Okay, so when you're in here, the first thing you wanna do, I guess it doesn't have to be the first thing, but uh, let's get rid of that plugin. We don't need it anymore. So we can deactivate the all-in-one WP migration plugin and delete it. Okay, once that's done, let's go back to the dashboard here. And let me explain something. So we need to point our domain name servers, our DNS from our old IP address to the new IP address. So let me show you how that works. I personally use, uh, and this is kind of going outside of the scope of this video, but it's a necessary step uh, as far as like migrating a website. So I use Google domains for my domain name. This is for tonyflorida.com. And down here at the bottom is all my DNS settings. So the old IP address of my old website is this right here. We want to edit that and plug in the new IP address for our new website. So that's this right here. So I'm going to copy that and paste it in and get rid of all that junk. So it's going to be something like this. And that is going to be for the A record for this website, DNS settings. So we'll save that. And when that saves, okay, so that's saved good. And now we can edit the other A record that starts with www and put that same exact IP address in here. Go ahead, click on save. Now the DNS settings have been changed. Let's go back to our WordPress website. And where were we? We were in the settings general. And we want to change this from instead of HTTP colon slash slash the IP address to our new, or I guess our, our domain name. So TonyFlorida.com and TonyFlorida.com. So that is good. You'll, you will notice that I added the S for the secure. That's because um, I will in the next video install an SSL certificate, show you guys how to do that. Um, it's actually gonna be moving from the old web host to the new web host, but that is again, a necessary step for migrating a website from um, old to new. So make sure you pay attention to that when you do migrate your website. So we'll go ahead and click save changes. And because, and it's, we're gonna get kicked out of here, um, but because we are, um, it be, I guess what I'm trying to say is because DNS settings take a while to propagate, up to 48 hours, it's typically less, like an hour, two hours maybe, um, we're going to have to wait until all the DNS servers actually update with the old IP address to the new IP address. So that'll take some time, um, but don't worry, This will there shouldn't be any issue as far as the, um, the traffic coming to your website. It should just eventually... Um, seamlessly transition from the old website host to the new website host. So hopefully that makes sense. And what I recommend now is to move your SSL certificate. The reason I'm not including it in this video is because it's different for every single website. But um, if you are running on Volter like I am, uh, definitely check out this video for the information, the tutorial on how to move that SSL certificate for your website. All right, guys, I know this was a little bit of a long one, but I hope you guys got some value out of it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you really liked it, subscribe to this channel. And if you do, I'll see you in the next one.